One sentence summary, a man who gets arrested to protect himself from hired killers is tracked to a police station by two hired killers, somehow. Could you beat the villain? Basically everybody in this film is a villain, so could I survive the situation of being under siege, outgunned and possibly locked in a police cell? Yes, yes I could. Phone for help? I don't understand, you're telling me that Officer Young, a person in, you know, possibly the year of our Lord 2020 or 2019, whenever this was set, didn't have a mobile phone on her, so she couldn't just phone for help. Of course she did, everyone has a phone on them all the time, including some of the other characters in this film. How would you improve this film? Gun Creek is an odd name to me for a town, and I wasn't sure if that was a real one. I looked it up, but I don't think it is. The characters in this film have terrible situational awareness. At least three times someone gets the drop on someone else, when really, they shouldn't have been able to. Officer Young, is she not going to get in trouble for firing her gun up in the air around civilians just to attract their attention? Because I think maybe she should. Why did Jerry Butler keep up his drunk routine for as long as he did after he got locked in the cells? Officer Young again. Why does she have that old-fashioned revolver? Was it just because she thinks it makes her look cool? Who designed that police station? I think it was supposed to be like a 1960s, 1970s style, but there was just too much wooden concrete for my tastes. And also, for somewhere that's, you know, made of wooden concrete, it didn't seem to be very sturdy. I expected there to be an ironic officer down moment after the light-hearted officer down moment where the uh, officer young and her buddy were playing around. There wasn't. And how dare that drunk fellow cuss out Fireball. If he's not man enough to handle the Fireball, that's his problem, not Fireball's problem. Also, was that an advert for Fireball? Or because it didn't seem to be, you know, painting it in a positive light. Why is there only one piece of bulletproof glass in the entire police station? Why did the FBI guys who saved Frank from the crooked cops also start firing at him? Were they crooked FBI guys? Wasn't really sure. Why are all the police in this terrible at being police? So the desk sergeant fellows are like, wow, you look just like this wanted criminal in the monitor. Come and have a look. He's dead now because of his foolishness. And then there's another guy who's like, oh my god, what's with all these dead bodies? He is also dead for his foolishness. Asking a fella standing around a bunch of dead bodies, what's going on with the dead bodies? He's killed, the, he's killed these people, quite obviously. No innocent man carries balloons like that. And Officer Young, how exactly did she manage to shoot herself with a ricochet bullet? And how did she know so much about the ballistics, having just looked at, you know, the hole in her, in her stomach? you know, or abdomen, let's say. There are two excessive uses of a stun gun in this film. I wasn't really sure, is this to, you know, make it look like Officer Young and Jerry Butler, whose character's name I didn't learn, that they're similar in some way? Is it just fun to electrocute people multiple times? I'm not really sure. It's odd that Officer Young, who's the main character, sits out kind of in the middle of this film because she's wounded. You would think that she would be the one, you know, out actively doing stuff, not just sitting by a door. And she chooses to free Frank. There's a choice of free Frank, who's, you know, scum, or Jerry Butler, who's a different sort of scum, and she decides to free Frank. She's leaning up against uh, the door to the prison cells area, the holding area maybe, and then Frank goes through that door and she's leaning up against it still. So did she move out of the way so he could go through the door and then sit back down in the exact same place? Or did he walk through the walls maybe? I'm not sure. Tony the Hitman did not actually have a good singing voice. I'm not saying that I could do any better than him. But when Jerry Butler said like, oh man, he's got a surprisingly good voice. What was he expecting? Was he how did you get out of those handcuffs? Well, let's not focus on that now. They never come back to how he got out of those handcuffs. I call bull honky. The amount of steam in the locker room at the end was incredibly dangerous. Someone's going to get hurt. Frank Grillo, he spent the entire film dressed like Johnny Depp from that aftershave advert. And then Jerry Butler's all like, ah, I offer a parlay, which is an old pirate term. Are you, that cast 
has to be on purpose. What's going on there? Or maybe I'm just going crazy. Officer Young didn't see Frank pick up the machine gun, so, and he's, he's got it in his hands now, but how did she know he was the one doing the shooting downstairs? She can't do. Frank is way too close to that petrol can when he shoots it, I think on two occasions, but he doesn't explode himself, so that's okay. And there is a big old propane tank or something like that outside of the police station that we see it as soon as, I think it's Officer Young pulls up at the station, and I was expecting that to explode in the later half of the film, and it never did. <laughs> Officer Young had shot Frank several times before the very important slow motion uh, time she shoots him, and that doesn't even kill him. I think that shot like hit him in the arm or the shoulder or something. <laughs> Jerry Butler shoots one of the crooked cops who's going to shoot Officer Young. Why would he do that? Surely he's, you know, criminal bosses who... The crooked cop is probably on the payroll for, uh, paying for. Surely they will be upset that he's gone and shot one of the people, you know, one of their employees. Bring out five beers. I liked how they set up the, the one bullet under the desk, but didn't actually show, look, there's one bullet here. Remember that for later. That was pretty good. And I liked the angry sergeant, which is a nicer version of the angry captain cliche. Having said that, three beers out of five.